Hi folks, my name is Jay Emerlinson. I'm a transformation engineering lead here at Software AG and a specialist in the ARIS platform. And today we're doing another one of our series, Help, I'm an ARIS Admin, helping you as, you, as an administrator to support your very first ARIS project or instance. Something that I think is a, a great opportunity for people to learn to become the, the primary caregiver of your ARIS platform. Now, today we're gonna be talking about how to do some more technical configuration and particularly the technical configuration of how people see information in ARIS Connect. We're not gonna get super deep because there's lots of things to learn about that, but I'm just gonna give you some tips on the first things you should know about how to bring things together in ARIS Connect configuration. Now, particularly, that's about configuring your portal. So your portal is going to be the sort of the, the, the lens through which all of your users get to see Eris and the very first place they go, the, the sort of landing, the splash um, of, what, of what you're doing. So today we're going to be using some of the things we've, we've done in our previous videos, including our entry model in particular, to make it easier for people to get information quickly and placing it onto Eris Connect. So let's go to our Eris Connect instance. You'll see oh, no, not a lot here. No, not, no diagram is available. Um, that's going to be in, in, interesting. Let's see if we can't change that a little bit. So to, ch to change our configuration, let's look, we're take a look at a couple things that we might want to do. I'm going to click, click on my name, go to administration. Um, the first thing you'll notice in administration is you can choose to publish databases. So if you've got multiple different databases, I'm going to go to Ares Architect just to show for a second, the multiple different databases that might have information in them, um, some of them might be versionable and some of them might have been versioned. Um, you're going to want to publish and choose to publish to your portal one or more databases people can see and access. If you choose to publish more than one and you have many users who can see more than one, they'll need to know, you know I mean, for example, they'll need to know that they have to switch between them. So you see on the top side, I can actually swap between two different databases. That's something you'll have to, you have to communicate to them. So as you might imagine, for our demonstration purposes, I've, I've chosen to only publish one database. The other thing to note is that um, you can change the order of them. So which database will appear first in the list if someone's just logging in for the first time. And you can choose the version that you publish of this database in the case it has been versioned. So yeah, for example, if you're doing governance activities in your database and you're, and you're only allowing people to see the last version as in the stuff that has been, has been saved and snapshotted in time and not the work that's being done right now and sort of updated day over day, but not governed, you might wanna do that. Um, and that's a, that's a good, place, good way to uh, sort of restrict the, the, the flow of information. However, we're going to spend some of our time today in managing configuration sets. So configuration sets speak to sort of the, the overlay on top of everything that controls which panels go where, which buttons go where, who can see what, all the sorts of things that might control the, uh, the access and, the, and the, uh, the information portrayed in ARIS. And so as a perfect example, right now we have an active layout. Uh, I'm going to try and copy that layout and modify it to match my particular needs. So I'm gonna hit this copy button or duplicate button and it's gonna create a copy for me and then it's not active. So I'm just gonna try it. And then later on, I'm going to check this checkbox to activate it um, and you'll see the difference immediately. So I'll click on this little icon that says edit, that says edit button um, and it's gonna open up a bunch of options for me. First and foremost, I can customize like the colors up here. So in the case that I don't, I no longer want the uh, primary header to be this color of blue, um, I can change that. I can, I can change this color from blue. I'm gonna go to a sort of reddish color for our primary header. Our primary color is going to be a sort of lighty pink. And there we are. So that's gonna be our font and, font and color. Um, I, if I have uh, languages, I can make certain languages available. Um, ARIS has multilingual support and you can see tons of languages available. By default, I have all of these languages available I've chosen. Um, I can choose to, to uh, add or remove however I'd like. Next is it, you might wanna you know, insert your company's logo. So in this case, I'm United Motor Group powered by ARIS Connect, but uh, you know, how about, how about I add the Software AG logo into there? So I'm gonna go over here and add my software AG logo, which is kind of nice. Um, actually, it only allows PNG format. So that's a good, that's a good point. PNG uh, is what you're going to have. And I have a PNG. So let's say I'm a company that has a logo that is, that is a little bell. Um, so yeah, you may make sure you do select logos of the file format PNG. 
Um, and there we are. So that's going to be our little bell. Um, and now that I've got my user interface uh, set, I'm going to go to perhaps the most important thing. There's a lot of stuff to drill into. You can get really down pretty far in the weeds. But let's go with the very first thing that matters to most people, which is the home screen. Um, these items and fact sheets and hierarchies and things like that, you can control down to the, the, the nth degree what shows up when you click on an item of a certain type. So in the case I click on a, a process model, you know, this is my default, this, or these are what the things show up, or my customer journey maps have these tabs that show up, and you can even control what shows up on each tab. That's gonna, that's gonna take us down a rabbit hole. So let's just start with the, really the home page and what, what your, your users will really need right off the bat. So the home page, you can choose the layout of a home page. Um, and so you, you saw before, I've got a sort of two section home page. I'm okay with that, but I don't love the proportions. So I'm actually gonna make this a really thin uh, layer over here. Um, I'm actually gonna, get, gonna make this about 20%. So it's gonna be a, a little tiny bar. And then I'm gonna make a really big A section um, for my AB section. Uh, so section A, here are all the things that I can have. And remember where we are no longer in the UMG repository. So I'm gonna go in and bring this in. I don't care about tasks. I'm not currently be using the ARIS, uh, the, uh, ARIS governance or ARIS process governance. And uh, I'm, I, well, I love my ARIS community. Uh, I'm gonna keep that. My dashboards aren't set up right now. Uh, people don't really need to have their favorites, um, recent changes. So I wanna try and reduce this to things that matter. And if I, if I find, if I, oh, I'm missing something, I can go over here and add that in, including things like an iframe, which you can put whatever you want in. Uh, so lots of great stuff uh, you can do with that. Uh, so the next is section B is I'm gonna take away everything except for just the quick start. Um, so it's gonna be really easy. And I can even modify the quick start to say, uh, you know, what, what's it called and what stuff shows up in the quick start, what tiles. So there's little things I can click on. You, you, you saw that uh, in, the, in the beginning, I can, I can click on a, a few different types of things. Actually, I'm gonna go back over to, to here to show you what I mean by it. Um, I've got a bunch of tiles over here that have a bunch of like functions on them. I, I may, may or may not want all these tiles. There's lots of stuff here. Too much, I would say. So let's, let's remove some of these. So I'm gonna remove GRC tasks and all my administrative panels. I don't need those, that stuff. I can just hit administration. Uh, I don't wanna care about this or that. Um, no, no, it's cool. I'm just gonna do create new model, download clients, manage models and objects. Simple, simple, easy, remove all the different uh, things that are in the way. And then as I said before, you can change things like the name. So UMG repository, I'm actually gonna call this my example database. Example database. Now, the, what you're gonna wanna do is you wanna put a diagram in here um, to edit which diagram shows up. You can see for the United Motor Group database, it's going to be bringing this particular diagram, which is its entry model. You're gonna to need to find the, the identifier for your entry model. Where is that identifier? Well, it's conveniently located in the URL. So I'm gonna to go to groups over here. Um, it's gonna open up my demo database, my example entry model, and you see this C dot structuring model dot my demo database dot bunch of text minus one. We're just gonna copy this whole string. So, can, so I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna go paste it over here uh, in plus add new start item, paste here. And you see, hey, from my demo database, it's gonna use the example entry model. And here is that model. I'll hit okay. And now we've, so now we've, we've paired this down, we just have, Example database, my content dashboards, and our beloved ARIS community, and then the quick start panel with a lot fewer things. Well, don't worry about saving. Everything automatically saves, hit back. And now I'm gonna do the next piece and the last piece, I'm gonna activate it. So go over here and activate this particular uh, uh, format. And it, it is now active. You can see all the colors have changed. Click over here. And I have my example database with our entry model we developed before, my content dashboards and our loving ARIS community, and this little tiny sliver of a bar with only a couple, with only four different uh, functions. So as you can see, much reduced complexity, much easier for your users to get right in. 
uh, and be able to use it. And you can see my company logo over here, that little tiny bell. So it's easy, fast, and uh, very convenient to, to manage your configuration set, change your portal, look the way it is. I'm gonna go back and, and modify it back. And you know what? I can do that with the click of a button because all I have to do is manage my configuration set and reactivate the one that was up and running before. And things change, the view changes, everything's back to the way it was. So kind of cool, pretty fast, pretty easy. Um, and I cannot more highly recommend just doing a quick modification to bring everything into alignment. It makes it feel a lot more like home uh, and gives your users a fast and easy way uh, to get to where they want to go and a lot of reduced complexity for all the things they don't need. And so once again, I'm J.M. Rollinson. Thank you so much for listening in and hopefully you've been enjoying this series. Please leave feedback and comments as, as you'd like. Um, we'd love to know what you'd like to know more about and good luck as an Ares admin. Uh, we look, I look forward to having you in a couple more of our videos as we're finishing out the series um, and hopefully giving you all the tools you need to make yourself and your organization successful with Ares.